Welcome back into room 442. Sarah Peraria joined with Mikey Singh, and yet again we are talking about a TFC loss. TFC lost to Atlanta over the weekend, and they kind of fell apart. The game was really back and forth for a while there. It was, you know, goal Atlanta, goal TFC, goal Atlanta, goal TFC, and then Atlanta just played better football, scored two more goals, final score, 4-2. No Insigne. Mm -hmm. Want to break down that game a little bit? Yeah, I think that's pretty much sums it up. It was a back-and-forth game. Uh, TFC ultimately ran out of gas, I think. Mm -hmm. And with the lack of depth that they have on their roster right now, if they're not, they don't have every single one of their pieces in their starting 11, namely Lorenzo Insigne and Jonathan Osorio, they get exposed a little bit. I think that's exactly what happened uh, over the weekend. So, yeah, at this point of the year, what are you going to do? That They're pretty much out of contention already. Nothing to lose sleep over. The results are, are second right now. Yeah, and speaking about Jonathan Osorio, Manuel Veth tweeted that there are there are rumors going around now that Osorio may be linked to Greek club Panathinaikos, mm -hmm. huge club in Greece, arguably the second biggest after Olympiakos. Um, are these just rumors? And if so, or if not, is this a good move? Could this be beneficial for Ozo's career? You know, he is at the end of his contract, mm -hmm. at the end of the season. Would we see? Would we potentially see an Ozo move overseas? Yeah, I mean, well, first off, like Jonathan Osorio has talked about his desire to potentially one day play overseas. Um, are these specific rumors true? Perhaps. I personally, I haven't heard anything, mm -hmm. so I can't tell you if it's true or, or not true. What I can say is that it's not very likely based on Ozo's current situation. Um, First off, he's still under contract with Toronto FC until the end of the year. Mm -hmm. So any move right now, uh, the team would have to agree to let him go. I think TFC want to do everything they can to keep Jonathan Osorio. Mm -hmm. And they showed that last season by not granting his wish to <laughs> go overseas and, and holding on to him. The second thing is Ozo's personal situation and physical situation. Um, he's dealing with what we would call a head injury. Um, it's, it's a tricky situation that I think everyone's still trying to, to figure out. And I'm not very confident that Ozo would be able to pass a medical right now, mm -hmm. today. Um, it's actually something that's put his Canada camp, this upcoming camp in a couple of weeks, or in a week or two, in jeopardy, his spot on that camp. So, so you're saying that he might not be able to train with the with the national team. He might the not exactly. Break. He might not be going with Canada to face Qatar and Uruguay and those upcoming friendlies overseas, um, which is huge. It, yeah, it it it's big at this point. I don't think his spot in Qatar is in jeopardy, but just this upcoming stretch. Yeah, he's not in a place right now where I think he can hop on a flight to go to Europe mm -hmm. and then play football it's just he's still trying to figure that out so with the transfer window closing in Greece in two days it's it's something that's very in my opinion unlikely at this point mm -hmm. maybe it's something they revisit after the World Cup um, well that's kind of what I'm thinking let's say you know World Cup finishes uh, Azorio let's say he plays with Canada however they may do I'm sure we'll see him there Winter transfer market opens beginning of January. Mm -hmm. TFC will not be playing because their season is over at that point. Would that potentially be a time where we could see Ozo maybe talking to a club overseas, whether, you know, Panathinaikos or, you know, a number of European clubs? Yeah, I think that's the big thing is that there's going to be a lot of interest in Jonathan Osorio. Sure. TFC are going to be interested in re-signing Ozo. They've had talks. Ozo told me all along that he wants to keep all of his options open. Right, he's going to reevaluate after the World Cup because we've seen in the past what a World Cup. If you have a good World Cup, you could make waves and garner even signif more significant interest than what he's already going to garner. Um, yeah, I imagined him to be taking a lot of those phone calls. Uh, like I said, he's going to weigh every single option. That's what he's come out and said. So I wouldn't be surprised if, yeah, come January, he does end up making the move overseas. Alternatively, he could also re-sign in Toronto, which personally I think is 
I mean, everyone has their own ambitions, <laughs> but he has it all made for him right now and all lined up for Toronto, where I think he would probably be the next captain of Toronto FC if, if he does resign and Michael Bradley retires. Okay, I'm going to just play devil's advocate a little bit, but if I'm Azorio, you know, at his age, it's kind of... It's, I would say it's like now or never, you know? He's at that point where I think if he stays with TFC, signs like another, whatever, two, three-year deal, mm -hmm. he's going to be staying there because getting to a certain age where I don't know if he's going to be getting calls in three years from a club overseas. Do you not think that it would be beneficial for him as a player to be going overseas, getting that experience at nearly any, like, any other league in Europe is going to be? giving him some better competition, whether that's maybe not, you know, all all those leagues, but at least the option of potential Champions League, Europa League, like playing for a team that is also just at a higher, higher level overall. Yeah, I mean, there's so many moving parts to that because mm -hmm. you would have to, like, look at Richie Loret. Yeah. I think that's a perfect example. And what happened with him when he went overseas. He went to Nottingham Forest, a team that's not in the Champions League, a team that's not in the Europa League, and he wasn't able to get minutes. Mm -hmm. Richie Larea is obviously a few years younger than Jonathan Osorio, but still very much, I'd say, in his prime. Yeah, Ozo doesn't look like he's slowing down, but he's on the wrong side of 30 right mm -hmm. now. How often do you see a player at Ozo's age move over to a Europa League or Champions League club and get minutes? Mm -hmm. It's a gamble. Yeah. Right. So would it be the best move for him to do that in the right situation? Perhaps I still think TFC with the ambition that they have, the Insignes, the Bernadeskis, Mark Anthony K's, other players that they're going to be bringing in this offseason. I still think it's probably better for Ozo if he can get the right number here at Toronto, which is a big caveat because mm -hmm. I'm not sure what exactly TFC are willing to pay Jonathan Osorio. So if he can get the right number, then I think TFC is probably the smarter option for him. All right. Well, TFC are head down to Florida this weekend, taking on Orlando. Um, we spoke about it. You know, they're in 13th place. Playoffs are out the door. It's nothing new. Going into this match, uh, you know, I expect no Ozo. Insigne is... Potentially. He's potentially. dealing with a personal situation. Right. So... What are what are they going into this game looking for? Are they still just, you know, trying to win their last few games out here and score some nice goals? Or are they just kind of like, well, we got a world top. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking, though. You know, some of these players, like, of course, they want minutes as well, but they don't want to pick up an injury. Yeah. We got an international break in a couple of weeks. So, so what's the mentality going to Orlando this weekend? Yeah, I think there's a lot of guys that are playing for their spots next season mm -hmm. still. There is still something to play for, with whether it be personal, pride, whatever it is. Um, and knowing the guys in that locker room, they're competitors. They're not just going to roll over. So I imagine they're going to go out and try to pick up three points and play spoiler the rest of the way, because what else do they have to lose at this point? There's a handful of guys that, yeah, are going to be going on international duty, but I don't think that's going to really slow anyone down. Okay. Well, I guess we will see what happens. TFC are taking on Orlando on Saturday.